The first thing is the overall picture, as we all know, has been encouraging over the last 20, 30 years, and around three quarters of us now will survive cancer for at least a year if we get it, compared to perhaps half of us when you and I were growing up. But um, the real issue is early diagnosis. And we know that with cancer, if we can catch it early, we've got a very good chance of dealing with it and someone surviving. Um, but what we found is that the NHS has this big ambition to diagnose three quarters of cancers at stage one or two by 2028. It's in their long term plan. And our report found they were not on track to deliver that. And in fact, they could miss about 340,000 early diagnoses by then unless they turn things around. So the government knows this is an issue. It is taking a number of steps, but we want to raise the red flag in this report and say that a lot more needs to be done. How much is it down to the fact that people were hesitant to come forward during the pandemic as opposed to not being called forward? Well, the pandemic was a major blow. Uh, across the UK, around 45,000 fewer people started treatment for cancer during the first year of the pandemic. And unfortunately, some people will die as a result of that. But even before the pandemic, the fundamental issue is the cancer workforce. We find that we're about 200 oncologists short, 2,000 radiologists short, 4,000 cancer nurses short. So although the government is very welcome, is investing in more diagnostic centres, about 200 of those across England, unless you have the staff to operate these centres, you're going to have these backlogs. And that's why we think sorting out the cancer workforce, uh, which we would like some independent system to make sure that we're actually training enough doctors and nurses for the future, is absolutely essential. Looking back, I mean, you were, I think you were Health Secretary 2012 to 2018. Um, we weren't training enough doctors and nurses um, from uh, 20 in the early 2010s. Um, why was that? Well, I think it's always not a high enough priority for health secretaries and chancellors when they're discussing spending reviews. They all, they're thinking about the immediate pressures, a winter crisis, um, what are we going to do to pay for you know, new drugs and so on. And the number of doctors that you're going to have in seven or ten years' time, because that's how long it takes to train a doctor, is never as high enough priority as it should be. Now, I set up five new medical schools, so I did try to do something about this. But I think we need to have a system that doesn't depend on whether an individual health secretary is interested in the issue, but permanently deals with the issue to make sure that whoever is in power, whichever party, whichever health secretary, we're always training enough doctors and nurses for the future. Looking back, do you feel that you and your then uh, chancellors could have done more? Well, you, you can always have done more, but I did increase the number of doctors that we train by 25%, which is one of the biggest ever increases. Um, but because it takes seven years, not, not a single additional doctor has yet reached the NHS workforce because of those decisions. So I think that's why we need a structural change that makes sure that year in, year out, we are always training enough doctors and nurses for the future. Because, you know, I think doctors and nurses on the front line understand that there isn't an overnight solution to these issues. It does take time to train up people in the clinical workforce. But they do want to know that there is at least a long-term solution in place. And that's why it's very disappointing. This week, uh, the government is planning to stop the House of Lords trying to amend the health bill to make sure that we do train enough doctors and nurses for the future. They um, blocked it in the House of Commons last week. And I think this is a real mistake because if we're going to diagnose these cancers earlier, we need enough people to operate the equipment. One of the options would be to recruit uh, doctors from overseas. But when we spoke last week, you felt that that wasn't ethical. So what's the alternative? Well, we, it's always been a kind of get out of jail card for the NHS to increase international recruitment. And we have absolutely brilliant doctors and nurses from abroad in the NHS, about a quarter of our doctors were foreign born or foreign trained. But um, what I was talking to you last week was whether it is really ethical to keep recruiting doctors from, for example, African countries that desperately need them at home. And in fact, it, even if we wanted to, it's not becoming possible anymore because we've got a global shortage of about 2 million doctors across the world, according to the World Health Organization. So 
everyone needs more doctors and more nurses. And the only long-term solution is for us to train as many as we're going to need. And we have so many young people who leave school and university and want to go into medicine and find they're denied the chance to do so. Surely it's the time to put that right.